welcome to Talk Law Radio with attorney Todd Marquardt of the Marquardt Law Firm at MarquardtLawFirm.com. Welcome back to Talk Law Radio. I'm Todd Marquardt on the radio, on Facebook Live, on YouTube, and on TalkLawRadio.com. Trying to get new subscribers to YouTube, so if you already like to watch YouTube videos, you can search YouTube for Talk Law Radio, and then just look for the Lady Justice and the Red, White, and Blue logo, and click subscribe. And then that way you'll get notified when uh, my new episodes are uploaded. And then you can watch videos when you walk the dog, when you cook your dinner, or when you're uh, just waiting for the kids to fall asleep. So we, Cheryl and I went to the Christian Women's Summit. It was held at Magnolia Hall, which is right next to Magnolia Pancake House on Hebner Road. Uh, it was put on by 6.30 a.m., The Word, by Salem, and um, it was a great event. The, there was lots of people there. Almost every seat was taken. It was a full house. It was great. There was a, a panel discussion between um, Adaton Musa who is a, a physician specializing in, in the brain and, and uh, epilepsy. And there were two therapists there, um, Annie and Jennifer. We'll give you a background as we talk about them more specifically. And the three of them uh, talked about women's health, uh, women's issues, and then people, some people ask questions. So I wanted to ask you, Cheryl, uh, just from an overview, what are some takeaways from the event that you remember? Um, so for me, it, um, the talk about self-care for women and how important that is, um, just being in constant prayer and seeking God's wisdom in the decisions that you make. Um, yeah, they, they talked uh, about different types of health. They did. Your physical uh, health, your mental health, your spiritual health. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we as women try to take on so much and we want to be these independent women like we're being told to be. Um, mm -hmm. We're still wanting to be good partners um, to those that we love and to good parents and good employees and have, and good friends. And good there were some people that talked about friendships. That was one of the ones that hit me the hardest because I know in the last two years I have not been a great friend and I have not prioritized some relationships and I owe some women some apologies. Oh, <laughs> like, well, you know, when guys talk about that, they, there's no apology. It's just, oh, yeah, let's go have a beer or or go uh, get some coffee or some uh, breakfast, but um, I don't know. That maybe it's just my friends. <laughs> no, and, and that's how it should be, and that's what, what even what the ladies were saying on the panel. That you know, w one of the things that we hear all the time is women are more emotional, and um, we really shouldn't be. Like mm -hmm. it should just be black and white sometimes. Well, yeah, the. Um, I think it was Annie that talked about that the most, that um, women are people just like men. They are. They are. <laughs> and that men have emotions too, or at least they should. Yeah. And that's, I think, one of the things that we're learning in this new generation is, you know, um, men are the same as women. They have emotions. We They need to talk about it just the same as women, but... Um, it does come easier to women. Women talk a lot more than men do. So. There, yeah, I think there's some biological differences in, in the way that God made made men and women. Um, but where, where you're um, not as strong in one area, that's just an, an area that to focus on. Absolutely. And um, I think that's why it's important to have different relationships. So when you're strong in something, and somebody else is weak in it, you can hold them up and vice versa. Mm -hmm. It's a mutual relationship. Yeah. Well, let me 
introduce for the people that weren't there. Um, Atatun Musa, uh, she's a doctor, double board certified neurologist and epilep epileptologist, epilepsy. Um, she loves medicine and is passionate about the diagnosis and treatment of epilepsy. She holds the position of adjunct assistant professor of neurology at UTSA. She's a believer in the power of prayer and the practice of medicine and co-founded the Kingdom Healthcare System, a nonprofit that provides free and affordable health care in San Antonio. Uh, you know Dr. Musa. I do. Uh, she's been on my show one time with her husband. Um, she does have a very strong faith. She does. Um, her whole family does. I've, I've had the pleasure of knowing them for a couple of years through mutual friend and um, have gotten to sit down and have dinner with her and her, her mother and um, just listening to both of them and talk about their faith. They're God-driven women. Mm -hmm. What I remember from them being on my show is that when, when they uh, have a patient, not only are they diagnosing medical conditions and prescribing treatment, but they're also uh, praying. They're, they're trying to lift that person up in prayer and, and get um, God on the same program with them. Um, yeah, it's a very holistic view of medicine. Right. It's not just the uh, physical needs. It's the emotional and your soul and your spirit can help for your physical medical needs. Yeah. And that the, the husband, Dr. Musa, he, he talked about how that was difficult for him at first to, mm -hmm. to ask for permission. Can I pray with you? Is it okay? And, and he's become more confident over time. And, and so that was um, a good example for me because sometimes I feel that way. It's hard. I mean, you never know who, um, the person that you're dealing with, what their spiritual relationship is with God. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to be told no sometimes. Um, you can just pray for them in your head. Right. So what are some things you remember from what Adaton Musa talked about at the Christian Women's Summit? Um, so for me, <laughs> um, with Adatone, sorry, Dr. Musa, um, she had the very medical side of it and what she was saying. And um, she was speaking a lot to being an advocate for your medical care and not just accepting the diagnosis that you're giving as a um, death sentence, mm -hmm. you know, um, to go further into it. And if you feel like the doctor is not giving you the right medications or the right therapy to seek more help, you know, uh, or the right attitude. If, if the doctor just has said that um, there's no hope, then maybe you should find somebody who has hope. <laughs> exactly. And she spoke a lot to the power of prayer and um, not just praying for one certain need, but praying for God to come into you and to um, ask for specific healing. Mm -hmm. You know, she gave an example of her own testimony that, um, you know, she was going through something that her husband didn't even know she was going through. And she just asked for the healing and God took it away from her and mm -hmm. made her be able to have um, successful pregnancies and, you know, a uh, healthier life after. Yeah, that was a miracle. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe it. Also on the panel was Annie Veers. She's a, a therapist, a co-owner for the Vine Wellness Group, a collaborative mental health and wellness private practice that focuses on the holistic treatment of individuals and families. She's a licensed professional counselor, a licensed marriage and family therapist, and a clinical supervisor. She serves as president of the San Antonio Association of Relational Therapists and is a contract therapist for Hope Restored. Uh, she and uh, the other therapist, uh, Jennifer Krause, um, I think both work for Hope Restored. Jennifer 
came from Missouri, and uh, she's the site clinical director for Focus on the Family, uh, New Hope Restored Marriage Retreat Center in Wimberley, Texas. Uh, she's passionate about helping people heal individually and relationally, and uh, she has specialized in trauma and marriage counseling. And so they talked about mental health and uh, the fact that women and lots of other people are so busy that, um, you know, that that sort of gets put on the back burner. But um, what are some takeaways that you learned from them? So from them, they were really the ones talking about um, invisible labor for women. And um, that's really dug deep into my heart because, you know, as a mom, you want to be there for your children. But unfortunately, in the economy that we live in now, you know, we need dual income in the households. And so trying to find the balance between a work life and a home life and not feeling the guilt of having to say no to certain things, whether it be your employer or to your family, just finding that balance um, and then knowing that you need to prioritize yourself. Because if you can't prioritize your own self-care, you're not going to be able to give to your family like you want to. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I yeah, think when she first used that word invisible labor as a guy that doesn't know much about women, I thought, is this related to pregnancy somehow? <laughs> Since my wife is a labor and delivery nurse, that's, that's the first thing I thought of. But invisible labor is all of the stuff that you do at home that you're not really compensated for and uh, the family expects you to do, but they really don't give you credit for it. And so that's why it's invisible. And not everybody has invisible labor, I'm sure, but it was common enough for them to acknowledge it. Absolutely. I mean, um, and I mean, men have the same thing, but for women, you know, it's shame, it's guilt for saying no, it's mm -hmm. fear and anxiety. And just because you're not at home doesn't mean that those issues end. And just when you go to work, you know, you, when you're at work, you're thinking about home. And when you're at home, you're thinking about work. And so your mind is just continuously going. And then what is the physical impact that that has on you? And that's how Dr. Musa came back into it and said, you know, the stress on your brain can make you live off cortisol mm -hmm. and um you know, then your stress is causing your high cholesterol to go up. And right. So, you know, for Annie and Jen, they were talking more about finding that peace and how it can help you calm down and make you better as a whole. Right. And to take care of your your alone time and, and your fun time so that you don't get stressed out all the time. Yeah. It's a, and I would... I would imagine for you that you're also thinking, how can I be a good example for my daughters who are going to grow up to have families and all, you know, carry on the family values? Absolutely. Um, for my daughters, for their friends that they bring into their home, um, a lot of them don't have a spiritual guide in their life. Um, not having judgment on people and just meeting them where they are in life mm -hmm. and then going to work and um, having the pressures of work and still being kind to people mm -hmm. in the hard moments when you're having hard conversations or, you know, with the type of law that we do, you know, we're handling death yeah. a lot and just. It being... can be emotionally exhausting just to have those conversations at work. All the time. Yeah. All the time. Well, we got to take another break. Uh, when we come back, we'll be talking about sinners and saints, and we'll be talking about the, um, what was it? Get fit God's way. Yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> this has been Talk Law Radio with attorney Todd Marquardt, brought to you by the Marquardt Law Firm. You can learn more at marquardtlawfirm.com. And be sure to listen to the full Talk Law Radio Show Saturday mornings at 11 on 9.30 a.m. The Answer.
Each week, attorney Todd Marquardt talks about the law. His mission with the Talk Law Radio Show and Podcast is to help you discover your legal issue blind spots. In the beginning, God had one law. Don't eat from the fruit of that tree. Then came the Ten Commandments. Now we have federal, state, and municipal lawmakers that won't stop creating new laws. Laws that might impact you without you knowing it. Listen to the show and drop a line on Facebook or email host at talklawradio.com and let the hosts know what you think of the show, the topics you want to hear, and whether you want to be a guest.